Well, now we've gone through and covered just about every kind of configuration you can have on the Revo 1836 lathe. And now that you've got it set up and you're ready to put this into production in your shop, you want to go through and check a few adjustments on the lathe. And we'll start up here on the headstock end. We'll go ahead and open up the cover here on the front and this is held in place by a little magnetic catch and you'll see the belt on the inside. And this is the drive belt. It is a multi-groove drive belt and this can be adjusted by simply loosening the lock handle and raising or lowering the motor to increase or decrease the amount of tension on the belt. And You can use this procedure also to move it from the low range of speed to the high range of speed and we'll show you how to do that. You simply loosen it, move the belt over from one set of uh, grooves on the pulley to the second set right here. Make sure that it's lined up. Give it a quick little rotation and then push the tension down on the handle. Lock the lock handle in place and then you should check the belt. Make sure you have about a quarter inch deflection. You just want to make sure you take all the slack out of it and tighten it down and you'll be ready to go on the inside. And that'll be our belt adjustment. Also a belt change and a belt adjustment. So that's one of the first adjustments that you should check is to make sure that this is set in place. The next thing you want to do is you're going to want to adjust the headstock and tailstock if needed uh, to make sure that the centers match up. And this is an important aspect of turning. We always talk about turning between centers. And so we'll take the spur drive and we'll press it firmly into the headstock, give it a little twist and make sure that it's locked in position. And then our live center, we're going to go through and push this firmly into the tailstock. I like to grab the body of it, give it a nice twist. Now that these are set, we want to make sure that these centers line up. So to do that, we'll slide the tool rest out of the way. We'll unlock the tailstock and slide it right up here to the headstock. We'll get them close. Make sure to lock the tailstock in place. Make sure that the headstock is also locked in place. Loosen the knob and then just bring these together to make sure that the centers line up. Now in this case they're lined up absolutely perfect and yours should be very very close right from the factory. If it's off at all there are a few adjustments that we'll show you here and we'll show you how to go through and cover those. When you do check this make sure that the tailstock ram is locked and make sure that the tailstock itself is locked to the bed and that way you'll know that you're actually in the turning uh, position or turning um, method here to, uh, to go through and line these up. So let's cover the adjustments here close up for you. Now if you need to make any adjustments to line these centers up, you can do so. What I would recommend doing is first doing it on the tailstock side and then lastly if you need to do it on the headstock slide. And there's a unique mechanism that uh, Laguna has right here on the bottom and that'll set the, uh, the pretension. That's what's going to allow you to slide this back and forth very easily. If you have too much play side to side on this one here. What this is going to do is this is going to take up the slop and actually tighten this up against the rails. And this adjustment allows you to go through and, and to position this and to take up any slop that you might have there and that'll get your centers online. To look at this a little bit better, we're going to step over to the bench in a moment, but I'm going to show you first of all where these adjustments are. You'll take your Allen wrench and you're actually going to do that right here in the top on the uh, tailstock side. There's one in the front and one in the back and that'll let you set the tension or the, the adjustment on the front edge and also the back edge of the uh, tailstock side. On the headstock side we've got one right here and we've got the other one that's on the inside and we access that right through the bottom right between the rails so it might be helpful to slide the headstock down. When you're making any of these adjustments and when you're checking them make sure that you've got everything locked. Make sure that you lock the, the quill here of the tailstock travel and make sure that once you've moved this that you've actually locked the tailstock in place just so that you can take out any of the slop that might be in there uh, and take out any of that to make sure that your tolerances are tight. Let's go over and have a look at the bottom of the tailstock. Now we've got the tailstock off of the lathe and onto the bench and you can see from the bottom side right here that we've got this little uh, plate right here and this is what slides up and down the rails of the, uh, the bedway and the lathe. And you're going to notice that we've got a split on both the forward and rear side of this and it is bolted to the headstock right through with these bolts here. And these are those little adjustment bolts that come in from the top. This little screw can be tightened or loosened to spread or to make this plate narrower and that'll take up any side play that you might have between the tailstock and the bedways itself. You don't want to have it so tight that you can't slide it, but you don't want to have it so loose that it moves around either. While we're on the bottom right here, you can see that we've got a large uh, mounting plate. And when we're using the lock handle on the, bottom, uh, on the uh, tailstock, it'll tighten and loosen this to the bottom of the bed. And if you have your 
tailstock locked in place and you find that it still moves, you can actually take up a little of the, bit of the tension by tightening this lock nut. And you'll get a large wrench on this, tighten this down just a little bit, and that'll allow you to go through and take up any play that should be uh, in there. Now it should be fairly well set from the factory. You shouldn't have to adjust it, but if you do, you can tighten it there. And you'll see that on the bottom of the banjo, we have the same sort of flange that's on the bottom. And again, this should tighten down when you lock the front handle down, but if you find that it's moving when it's locked all the way, just give this a little clockwise turn on the lock nut, and that'll increase the amount of pressure that this flange puts on the bottom side of the bed. Now when we're talking about the tailstock and the centers, let's go ahead and cover the live center. We've got a really nice high quality live center for you and this one uh, features a few different things that you may or may not have seen on live centers. Of course, it rotates on the tip here and what, this is what we call a cone center. Sometimes you'll use the cone for holding different things but you might want to pull this off and if you do, you're going to use this little hole right here and I usually use just a small Allen wrench, rotate that until you can stick it all the way through and then this cone center will come off. Now I've got it loose right now, but if you needed to, if it was lodged on there, you can actually use this little hole here to kind of break it loose. Rotate your cone center off and you'll see on the inside, that again we have another center on the inside and a lot of turners like to use this center. Now this middle point on the inside of this center actually is removable and if you take the live center off and access the hole on the back side, you can tap it out knock out your center pin and this will be a cup center uh, on the inside. It has a little sort of a disc shape to it and that can be used to hold your, uh, your spindle pieces there as well. You will also notice that there's two little holes right here and those are used for a spanner wrench to increase or decrease the load on the uh, live center if you need to or to replace a bearing on the inside. But that's a great feature and quite often you'll see turners use it in this position with the threads exposed and using this small point on the inside of the center. Okay, so now that we've got the live center covered here, let's have a really quick look here at the drive center. This is a spur drive and you can see it's a four winged spur drive. It's got a center pin and sometimes you might need to sharpen this and you can actually sharpen this on a grinder and if you're going to do that uh, or if you need to adjust the center pin length at all, you can go through and unlock this with your Allen wrench and pop out that center pin. You might have to grab it with a little set of pliers and that center pin will pull out and you can adjust the length on this if you need to by grinding on the end of it and setting that in place and bring that further in and out. And you'll actually pull that out and you can sharpen these right on the wheels of a grinder if you need to have a sharper point on your live center. And that's accessed right there. Now we've pulled out the spur drive. A lot of turners like to use face plates and you can actually screw this into a waste block uh, or to a disc and, and use it in many different ways. But the Revo lathe is supplied with a very nice uh, small diameter face plate and it threads right onto the hardened spindle just like so and once you have this in place you'll see that it bottoms up against the flange right here and in many applications this is okay but when you have a lot of weight out here for example like a bowl or a platter you'll want to take this and lock it in place and there's two small set screws that are provided here you simply just drop your allen wrench in here lock down those set screws and they actually tighten down to a little landing area on the edge of the spindle so that the face plate will be locked in place and it won't come off even if you turn the lathe off and the piece wants to start unwinding. So that's locked in there securely and I'm ready to start using face plate for doing face plate turning. Now a lot of times when you're using a face plate, it, they can be hard to remove and we've just loosened up these set screws and if I can't loosen this up, the Revo lathe is supplied with a little torque handle and it actually drops into a hole right here and you'll utilize the spindle lock button on the front here. So we'll use the spindle lock, rotate that into where it's locked, use this lever handle to unlock the face plate and now I can very easily unthread it and I'm ready for my next job. Now one of the features I really like on the Revo lathe is the in-head indexing and we've got a really unique uh, indexing system on the inside here. It's got three separate rings and you can see the little tricolor uh, markings right here and this will actually give you the indications of where you're locking it in. And we're going to use the spindle lock plunger right here to go through and lock those in. We have three different areas here. We've got 14 units around the spindle. We've got 36 or 48 or any multiples thereof. And so what we can do is we can rotate the spindle to the correct position and then we can push the plunger in to lock it and then you can actually rotate this and actually lock it in place. You'll see on the inside of the headstock 
that we've got the plate on the inside that has the holes that this spring plunger is going to lock into. Now when you're switching between 48, 36, or 14 position, you'll simply loosen these little lock nuts right here. And once those are loose, this little piece will slide up and down on the headstock. Now one quick note when you're using the, uh, the spindle lock here is to make sure that this is disengaged. You've got this unscrewed completely and that the spindle is free before you try to start your lathe. If you leave this engaged and you try to start your lathe, it's going to try to turn while the spindle is locked in position and it's not going to work. Well that wraps it up. We've gone through and done the complete assembly of the new Revo 1836 lathe and we've covered all the adjustments and all the different options and features and you can see what a great lathe this is. If you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call. You can reach us toll free at 800-234-1976 or check us out at lagunatools.com. Thanks for watching.